In the last video, we registered animals through our register animal method. But at this point, we aren't able to keep track of which animals are actually registered. And the way we can do that is using lists. So what is a list? A list is an object that holds specific variables in a specific order. And this is what it looks like. So we have here a list with between diamond text string then we have the name and then something behind. So the first thing is the type. So here we have the type, type list, which holds variables of string, and then the name, and then a constructor. And a constructor is something we're going to talk about in a video later on. So as I already said, between these diamond tags, we register the value of which type this list is going to hold. So what is this actually going to look like if we're trying to add an animal to our list? Well, we can call our animals list and then it has a method or function which is called add and then we can give in something of the type of which we registered the list. So this time it's type string and we're going to add Hank the dog. Then inside our list at the first index, which is actually zero, there will be a value registered of hang the dog. If we then call another time, and this time Fred the cat, then Fred the cat will be registered at the next index, which will be one. So let's go to our code and let's start implementing this list. Well, where are we going to register this animals list? I'm going to register it at the top of the file so we can also use the other functions and not just our main method. So I'm going to type list string and then animals and I'm going to say new list string then we're going to add our animals to this list and where can we do that in our register animal method I'm going to delete these prints and then I'm just going to say animals without the uppercase and then you can see it's helping us it's saying add yes and then I'm going to use some string interpolation to type out this string, which is going to say Harry the dog or Fred the cat. And then I'm just going to return true. So let's run that. And now we only see true true. And then we can print this animals out. And let's see what it does. And as you can see, we have here a, something that we call an array of the values that's inside our list. So the first value is Harry the dog, the second is Fred the cat. What we now are able to do is to access a certain value at a specific index. We can say, I want the animal at index zero. We can do that by these block brackets. If we then run, then you can see that it's saying Harry the dog. We can also do this for one and then run. And then you can see Fred the cat. But what happens if we try two? There is no animal registered at index two. We know that because we only added two values and the first is going to be zero, the second is going to be one. So what happens now? So now we did get an error. And what does this error say? So uncut error, range error. So this is the type of the error. And then index out of range, index should be less than two. It's actually saying, hey, you're trying to call index two, but it doesn't exist. So maybe don't try that. And if I try one now, it's going to say fret the cat. So that was the first exception which you saw. And we're going to talk about that in a few videos. So what is handy about this actual register method? Because in this case, we could also just copy this and paste it here, and then we don't have to hassle of this method. Well, in many cases, when you get input from users, you might want to validate if these inputs are actually what you expected. The way we can do that is by actually using an if statement. So let's take a look at this. I can say if, and if I then use the name variable, there are all kinds of things I can do. But 
There's also something which is called is empty. Returns true if this string is empty. If I do that, and then just return false, then when our name is empty, the animal won't be registered to our list because it already found our return value. So if our name is empty, it's going inside our list, it's going to return false and it's going straight back to the caller of our method. So if I now put quotes here, so this is a string empty, and just print this out, you will see that only Harry the dog is registered to our list. And that's because this is now an empty value. We can also do this for our kind. So what this says now is that if the name or the kind is empty, then we won't want to register it to our animals list. And this way we can put all kinds of validations inside our register animal method. And it doesn't clutter our name method in which we type everything that our program actually needs to do. But there's also another way to do this, because the only problem now is that we have a boolean here. So why is that a problem? Well, if this is a real world scenario, so let's say we have a web page and somebody filled in their name is empty and we only get in return a boolean, we can only say, hey, something went wrong. But it would actually be nice if we could say, hey, we didn't fill in the right name or the right kind. And that's why we're actually going to use exceptions to give us a return value of what was going wrong. And I'm going to show you that in the next video.